and just want to say to everyone else can get stuff because they think women aren't strong enough but we just beat the world. And that phrase now has become immortal. Michelle Payne, I'm delighted to say, joins us now from Ascot Vale in Melbourne. Michelle Payne, good morning, congratulations. Good morning, thank you. Hold that cup up nice and high where we can see it. What a wonderful thing to have in your hand. It looks so lovely, <laughs> isn't it, Jeff? Have you, have you even let that go in the last 12 hours or has it been with you the whole time? <laughs> no, I actually just got it this morning. I'm not sure who had it after the races yesterday, but it's definitely good to have it in my hands. All right, now look, I've, I've got something to, to break to you. Apparently you're, you're in trouble with your dad. I spoke to your dad this morning and he said that you said, told him on the phone, oh, Dad, I'll see you later, I'll be home tonight, and you didn't turn up. Now, young lady, what's your explanation? <laughs> <laughs> I've just been dragged around from pillar to post getting photos and interviews so I'm going to have to make it up to him tonight hopefully. He's not going to ground you or anything is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll be right. <laughs> Looking back on this and reflecting on, on the journey of trying to, to get a, a promising horse to, to the position where it wins the Melbourne Cup, how did you and the trainers pull it off? Looking back, can you remember here a, a key moment or a key part of the development where you thought this is all coming together really well? Um, probably on Friday it was um, when, when we galloped him at Terang. Um, we worked with another horse of Darren's Dandino and I followed him and we straightened up and I went over the line and I was like, that is the best he's ever worked. And he'd had a tough run the week before, which had really toughened him up and he was super fit and just in the best condition he's ever been in his life. And I was like amazed and I come back in and, and I was trying to keep a lid on it and I said to Darren, yep, no, that was good. And um, I went to hop on my next horse and he was legging me on and he said, that's the best he's ever worked. I said, I know, can you believe that? And we both were just like amazed at this horse and, and how he had um, peaked at absolutely the perfect mm. time so it was all coming together then Stevie drew barrier one it was just like is this actually happening and um, it did it's interesting to hear you talk that way the way you describe it it's, it's almost as if fate was playing a hand you had this incredible calm feeling all day long it was as, as if it was inevitable that this was going to happen is that the feeling that you had it is it's like it was meant to be um, my whole life I feel like I've been pretty blessed. Um, I feel like my mum, she looks after me and things just seem to fall into place. Like I obviously work really hard and, and I've, I've got, um, I always have a lot of, um, you know, hopes and dreams, but I follow my instinct and um, yeah, I've just been so lucky and, and so lucky to find Prince. Um, I first rode him after I come back from an injury which was the one that I was going to retire from and I, and I trialled him and Darren said this is a really nice horse and, and I was blown away by his trial that day. I was like, he is a very nice horse and, and I just was so hopeful that I could stick with him and thankfully um, I come, come across a great um, owner in John Richards and Sandy McGregor who, um, San, uh, John has been amazing for my career. He, he's been so solid and, and I just can't thank him enough for giving me the opportunity. I obviously try my best in every race and every gallop to, to do the best for everybody and um, it's just so nice to be rewarded with, with it not just to win, to win the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, the, uh, the, the solidity in your life seems to be just a, a profound element of why you do well. And clearly your family, having gone through such sorrow but also great joy, is an amazing support around you. How do you, wh why, how do you understand the way that your family got through such difficult times and has come together as such a strong unit? From my dad, my dad's attitude to life is just amazing. He's um, he's a very religious man, goes to church every Sunday. We were dragged along to church every week and he has such great faith and I think that really got him through when my mum passed away and and he's always like if something's, go if things are going bad, there's always something good around the corner and you've always got to believe that and just keep keep working and, and keep positive and, and that attitude has really got me through my life and got me through this career. Um, I can't thank him enough for what he's done. Your phrase, get stuffed, has gone international. It's now the global <laughs> phrase for women fighting back in male-dominated industries. I wanted to know this morning, Michelle, just how bad did it get for you? Can you give us some examples of the rubbish you've had to cop along the way? I don't really want to go into it too much because um, I'm on top of the world right now, but it, it is hard. But um, I'm sure there's so many aspects of life that women go through and I just hope that 
you know, it's it's just a reminder that if you work hard and, and you dream, things can happen. And I really want to say that out to all the young children and, and people growing up with dreams, you know, you've got to believe in yourself. And for some reason, I always have had great belief in myself. I don't know why, but I always thought I was you know going to be a good jockey and mm. and one day win the melbourne cup and it's just it's just goes to show that fairy tales do come true and and you've just got to you've got to stick to your dreams and and keep striving for them well look i understand you don't want to go into the bad stuff this morning fair enough but i just wonder there must be some um male jockeys and blokes out there in the industry perhaps uh feeling a bit shame-faced this morning do you reckon a couple of them might be feeling that way reflecting on a few things in the past michelle <laughs> I don't know, but I, to be honest, yesterday everybody, all the other guys in in the jockeys room, they were so happy for me because they obviously see how hard I work. We're there every day, and I stick up for myself. Don't worry, I'll let them know if I'm not happy. <laughs> and and I think we have we've got a good respect for each other. The other jockeys, they're awesome. Um, they were all like, you know, we we're sitting around chatting, and and they were just so happy for me, which was just great because. You know, obviously everybody wants to win, but it's it's so nice to be able to still sh share that moment with them after and, and talk about it and, and, you know, relive it. I'm glad that collegiality is there. That's lovely. You've had so many serious injuries and, and falls, skulls and necks injured and hurt. Why didn't you give up? What kept you going? Um, I'm not really sure. I, I, I sort of live my life where I just go with the flow and, and go on my instinct and what I feel and... Um, my last fall was probably the only one which I thought maybe this is time for me to retire. Um, but my dad, who which surprised me because he's always been a, more to pushing me to retire, he was like, don't panic, you know, you've got plenty of time to think about it, just mm. sit back, don't have to make a decision right now. Um, so I had a good think about it, I had two months off where I was recovering and I just felt that I wanted to go out on my own terms and I felt that there was more to come and I'm so glad that I didn't right now. <laughs> that you'd be feeling that very strongly. Uh, we've all been uh, marvelling at the beautiful imagery and pictures of, of you and your brother Stevie, of course the strapper to that wonderful horse and who's clearly such a, an incredibly devoted and hard worker himself in the, in the racing industry. What's the nature of the bond between the two of you? Um, it's amazing. Like um, obviously, growing up in a family of ten kids, Stevie and I were the youngest two, and and we spent so much time together growing up. And he is just a beautiful person. He has not got one bad bone in his body. Um, I think that just goes for all Down syndromes. And um, to share that moment with him was just a fairy tale, um, absolute dream come true. And I believe my mum probably she I think she helped that happen. Do you feel her presence very strongly in your life still? I absolutely do, yeah. Um, just even despite the things that have gone wrong in my life with the, with the injuries and all of that, I feel that you know things happen for a reason. And, and when I did have those injuries, I was able to travel the world and um, do things that I wouldn't have done if I was riding because I was so set on on my goals and everything that I, I was so racing orientated. I never would have travelled, but I got to go to Europe. I got to go all around the world in those injuries and. Um, yeah, I believe that she's just she helped shape my life, and and I and I live by that, and I'm just yeah, I'm so grateful. Your father um, uh, believes you're pretty close to retirement. Uh, are you considering that actively? Is that something you might do soon? Um, I I sort of laid in bed last night, and I was thinking about it, and I don't feel quite ready yet that it's the time. Um, I think that I'll know, and um, yeah, I'll just live my life and and you know see what happens and then if the time feels right that's when I'll, I'll hang up the boots but I don't think it'll be too far away. Michelle thanks for giving us an absolutely beautiful story yesterday. Go well. I know you're racing in Kyneton today and take care. Thank you so much. Michelle Payne there who really has rewritten sporting history not just here in Australia but around the world and an extraordinarily grounded young woman as well.